welcome to episode four of the All For Our City podcast. Um, go check out the last episode if you have not. Uh, last episode I talked about like things going into the San Jose game. This episode I'm going to be talking about the San Jose game itself. So we start off here with some news about Drew. So he's out of the hospital. But yeah, I found that out on Saturday when he was at the fundraiser, at his own fundraiser, you know. Um, found out that they released him the night before, so it was good to see him and to see that he is starting the recovery process. The fundraiser was good. I enjoyed it. Um, they had a lot of good prizes for the raffle they had, and that did include a signed home jersey for Reno 1868, which I did win, which is awesome. Um, and it was cool to see all those people out there supporting Drew. And for the community to come together like he like did for him. Moving on to 1868 News. Getting right into the game review. Um, Reno got off to a great start. Uh, they scored a goal less than five minutes into the match. It's a great goal. Brian Brown opened was really opened up space on the wing. Um, which drilled in the defender. Which he was able to give the ball to uh, the center. And then the center player... I was able to score, get around a few players and score, which is really nice. Um, uh, we were up 3 nothing at the end of the half. We held on to that to win the game. Brian Brown played amazing. He was able to create a lot of space in the middle by drawing the uh, in by drawing out the middle defenders after he had gotten around the outside defenders, which is really awesome that he was doing because he was doing a lot of that. Um, hopefully he'll continue to do that all season for us. Uh, the San Jose defense was even frustrated with him at one point, and it was really clear to see that they were getting upset with him. Uh, one of the San Jose players even tried to take him out at one point. I remember seeing Brian Brown on the ground, and that's something that you never want to see, especially considering that he's one of our best players, and you don't want to see that during a friendly game either because, I mean, it's basically just a... Uh, scrimmage don't like seeing that but um he's up he's fine he he got up and he's fine so reno came to play and san jose didn't i think that that's very obvious by the way the game started and the way the game went uh the second half was pretty quiet because everyone who was out there were basically trial players uh san jose had no offense really the whole game they didn't get any uh good scoring chances at all Really, in the first half, I didn't think. Uh, they got a one. I remember at least one in the second half that they kind of got. Um, for most of the game, it looked like San Jose had a midfield, and that was it. No defense, no real offense. Um, they had a lot of issues with trying to get players into the middle, trying to get that cross into the middle and things like that. So they definitely have a lot of areas where they need to improve. Uh, some of the takeaways from the game... Is San Jose still has all of the same issues that they had at the end of last season. It doesn't look like they have improved at all during the off season. Now that's just after one game. Uh, they could improve later on, or they could improve more during during preseason. But that's just during one game. So Reno looked like a better team than they did last season. It looked like they made a lot of improvements during the off season, even though we did lose Hopano. Brian Brown looked really good. He looked good enough to be in the MLS. He was playing really like an international player during the game. Unfortunately, though, we won't really be able to know what the team is going to look like this season until March when we actually start playing games against other teams in our league. Uh, and that starts March 9th with that rematch with Orange County. So that'll be a good one to really start off the season with, especially if we look as good as we did against San Jose, um, I think that we can really come out and play more dominant at the beginning of the season than trying to catch up and gain points at the end of the season to try to get into the playoffs. And, you know, we'll know a lot more, too, as well. After the tournament in Salt Lake, we'll know where more players are at and how we stack up better against uh, other teams that are in that tournament and things like that and how they stack up and stuff like that. Uh, something else that I just wanted to mention is the San Jose Ultras. Before I get into what they did 
at the game. I just wanted to let everybody know that they were invited to Drew's fundraiser. Um, and they didn't show up for that. I also had heard that they didn't even talk to the people setting up the fundraiser about not showing up. Yeah, they didn't know if they were going to show up or not during the fundraiser. And I did ask, kind of like a midweek thing, I did ask to see if anybody wanted to be on this podcast. Um, but they uh, respectfully declined. But looking back at it, their behavior at the game has led me to believe that they really don't care about Reno or trying to be friendly with us, which is disappointing from my perspective. Um, I understand that they are away fans, so I understand that they are away fans, you know, and away fans come in to away games and they want to be like away fans and stuff like that. I get that. And I get going to away games and feeling like the home fans are being hostile or uh, things like that, or even not really 100% being friendly with the home fans, even if they're friendly to you, you know, because that's happened with us with different games and stuff like that. So first, uh, the first thing that they did apparently was they were rude to our fans. Um, one of our people from the brigade was saying that they bumped into them uh, while they were marching in, like kind of like a bump, like try to push you out of the way, try to be intimidating kind of thing. You know, and I guess overall they were just being jerks. And it seemed like they were trying to set a tone like we were rivals and they didn't like us. Anyone who was trying to film them or take pictures of them was being harassed by them. Uh, I know this from experience because it happened to me during the game that I went to film them for my video. I had already gotten a little bit of footage of them marching and I went to film them for my video and dude grabbed me and like threw me out. Like he literally put his hands on me and was like, no, you can't film and like threw me out. Which I totally get not wanting to be in my films and stuff, but I feel like that could have been done a little bit better. So David Calvert, Calvert, who does the photography for the team, he's a cool he's a cool guy. He's helped me out a few times when I've had some technical issues. Uh, so he was also being harassed by them when he was trying to take pictures of them and stuff like that. And I didn't find that out till the end of the game when he was talking to some other people. Uh, in the brigade. And then they were also putting up stickers in our stadium. Uh, that's not a big deal except for it's disrespectful. And that's the primary reason away fans put up put up their stickers in away stadiums. Like I know when we go to Fresno, Vegas. When we went to Fresno, Vegas and um, Sacramento last year. And we always do it in Sacramento. We put up our stickers everywhere. We kind of tried to hide them. And then we kind of tried to like. We try to hide them a little bit so it's not like obvious where all the stickers are and we try to put up a bunch so it's kind of annoying uh, to get all the stickers off but also it's something that is done kind of like a disrespectful kind of thing kind of like tagging is for gangs and stuff like that um, not like to that extent like if I put up a sticker somebody's not going to necessarily punch me you know, unless, or try to fight me, unless, like, we're in Sacramento, but, um, stickers are just more of a sign of disrespect, so that threw me off a little bit, and then there was no reason for for them to act this way, I feel like there was no reason for them to act this way, uh, we're not rivals, we're not in the same league, and we're affiliates, what, what being affiliates means as well is that we're basically the same team, um, Reno primarily signs players to open up roster space for San Jose. So most of the people that are signed from Reno are prospects for, or not even most, it's like all the players that are playing for Reno are basically prospects for San Jose. San Jose wants everybody from Reno to go play for San Jose, except for the people that San Jose send to Reno. The people that San Jose send to Reno are here mainly to train and to get better and things like that. Anyway, even a lot of the players that um, play for San Jose currently have played for Reno at one point. Like their best, like one of their best defensemen, and I think he was their best defenseman at one point last year. Jimmy Oxford played for Reno for a whole year, and he was like our captain, and he was like this awesome player for us. Um, Matt Bersano and JT have both played in San Jose and both done great things for San Jose. Um, last year especially but they're both from Reno and they both signed with Reno first so I get doing things like that at away games but this wasn't really an away game this is basically a scrimmage between two teams 
and it, or between two teams, basically a team and its reserve team or reserve players, you know. So I don't really feel like the intensity should have been there. I feel like a lot of the Reno fans want to be more friendly with the San Jose fans, but but the ultras kind of reject that, rejected that in this last game. What's annoying as well with some of this is that some of the Reno fans, especially ones who are fans of San Jose, were trying to justify the ultras behavior and I mean in my opinion there's no there's no real justifying poor behavior when you come into somebody else's stadium especially if we're affiliates and we want to be friendly with each other and you're rejecting that kind of rejecting that you know lastly since the game I've unfollowed them on all my social media before the game I was following them you know um, I tried to follow San Jose a little bit closer than I might this year I might back off from following San Jose as much just because I unfollowed all the ultras and that stuff um but i was following them and stuff because i did want like and i'm not the only person either but i did want that like friendly kind of atmosphere between our two fan bases and it just seems like they want to reject that so in turn i just don't want to follow them on social media or anything now that i more understand what their mindset is towards us and our fan base and stuff like that and I mean to me it seems like they don't even really care about Reno so two in which that might be true but I have talked with fans from San Jose and some fans in their ultras group and they have said like Reno and San Jose are basically the t same team so there's no real reason for us to be upset with each other but it is what it is it happened I'm moving on from that away team news the Nevada Coyotes FC they have their first pregame uh, this weekend it's they're playing Napa Valley to in which Napa Valley um, has the date the or the year that Napa was founded on their as their name just like Reno 1868 does so that that was an interesting thing when that actually happened and they announced that that was going to be their team name because they announced that after Reno had already announced it as our team name and Napa Valley being in Northern California, and it's kind of close for them to have a similar team name or the same kind of team name. So we thought that was interesting. But um, so it's kind of like at that point when they announced their name, because it was also a couple of other teams that announced they're having a similar name like that the year that they were founded. Um, we feel like we kind of started a trend with that, or at least that's what people were talking about in that discussion. Um, It'll be interesting, though, to see how well uh, this team does this season because they're, like, back-to-back -back champions. champions. Uh, in the leagues they're playing in, they have a summer league and a winter league, and they did win their winter league, and I'm pretty sure they won their last summer league. Um, they play really well. They Last year they had quite a few players who were former Reno 1868 players, um, and I guess the team was made up in 2017 the team was largely made up of people who went to the Reno 1868 tryouts and didn't make it onto the team um, so I think that they're continuing to do that and they're finding success in doing that and I know that it's largely local players and things like that and it's a good team to support too because they are a championship caliber type of team even though it is they do play in a largely smaller league on to the indoor team Bum, bum, bum. Well, uh, some stuff to talk about with the indoor team. Not a lot, a lot to talk about. So we lost our last game. Go check it out if it's up on YouTube. I don't know if it's going to be out by the time this podcast comes out. I'm trying to do so much. So we have fundamental issues with the team that we are not able to overcome at this point. And there are some glaring issues like, for instance, certain players won't pass to other players because they don't get along with other players. Players will be on the bench talking crap about players who are on the field um, and not in a productive way either. Like, they're not telling players that, oh, you need to improve on this or you need to improve on that. They're just telling players that, you know, that they suck and stuff like that. Um, we have no offense either. We don't really have, like, a number one striker or anything like that, and we really don't have any offense at all at this point we've only scored six goals in six games with two of those games being shutouts so we didn't score in those games so um, that's definitely a large area that we need to improve on uh, the top team in the league scored 32 goals in that six game regular season so 
there is a lot of ground that we need to make up on that. And then um, even the team that's right above us. So we're in last place. The team that's right above us that's not in last place, or yeah, the team that's right above us has scored 18 goals. So that's like three times the goals that we've scored. Um, so there is definitely a lot of area that we can improve on that. And I mean, improving on that is really simple. I think, I think if we go out and we find an off a more offensive player, like a number one offensive player, um, then that'll help out a lot. But I think that we do still have those fundamental issues that need to change and players' mindsets need to change. I've talked about that extensively in previous podcasts about how players' mindsets need to change in order for the team to be more productive. Yeah, and then some of my teammates got mad at me at the end of our last game. They were yelling at me on the bench, or yelling at me from on the bench, basically telling me that uh, I wasn't doing anything. So they were yelling at me like I wasn't doing anything because it was like, it wasn't like that they were yelling at me to... Uh, to do something better or whatever. They were just yelling at me because they were saying I wasn't doing anything or wasn't playing hard enough. Um, so I got frustrated at that because it was less than two minutes in the game. We were down by four. And I had I had felt like at that point, like I had played my hardest that I could in that game. Um, we didn't have anybody. We had one person on the bench for substitutions for the first 10, 15, 10 to 15 minutes. So I couldn't sub for like the like most of the first half. So I was out there playing and I was out there playing my hardest even though that was happening. I don't want to seem like I'm bragging cuz I'm not trying to brag cuz I really do feel like I'm a sucky player, but but I feel like I've been working the hardest in the last half of our season, so these last 3 games because I've scored two goals in the last 3 games. Um and I'm the only one that have scored that has scored in the second half of our season, so it was pretty frustrating to me to hear people telling me that I wasn't playing hard enough. Um, you know, even after I'd scored in that game. But yeah, I was frustrated after the game, not just about that, but because I'd felt really bad about my overall performance during this season. Um, I don't know if I've talked about that in this podcast before uh but i feel defeated after every game this season i just really felt like defeated especially that saturday game which would have been last week or the week second to last week it was the saturday game first of the two 12-hour games i had scored in that game but i was like devastated at the end of that game because i had felt like i hadn't played my best and I, at that point, even felt like even if I play my best, you know, it's not going to matter um, because I could go out and score and then we're still going to lose. Um, but that's um, how I felt for, like, most of the season. I think the first game is the only game where I haven't really felt like that. And it's not one of those, oh, we lost, it's no big deal, you know, kind of things where I'm getting mad because, you know, we're losing. It's more like... I feel bad about how I play, and I don't feel like I'm a good enough player, um, obviously. That's just how I felt about, yeah, that's just how I feel like after every game almost when we lose, you know, I just feel like I'm not good enough, you know, and I mean, that's motivated me to work really hard, and that's kind of why the reason I've been able to score in these last couple games is because I have been working harder on trying to improve as a player and try to improve the team that's around me and things like that. But um, I was talking to our goalkeeper after the game. Uh, He had basically told me that no matter how well I play, because of the type of player I am, being emotional and being upset all the time and being, um, not upset all the time, but being emotional um, and then being aggressive a lot of the time, that uh, it doesn't matter how well I play because people will always find... Uh, will always be upset at me and push blame on me just because of the type of player that I am, I guess. So just because I get upset, just because I get, um, I play aggressively and I get upset and that sort of thing. So people are going to push blame onto me and things like that. So while that doesn't make me feel any better about what happened, um, you know, because I never like getting yelled at, at my, by my teammates, 
you know, in a manner which they're trying to make me feel bad, which in that manner it did to me it make it was one of those where I felt like they were trying to make me uh the person who was doing it was trying to make me feel feel bad or trying to tell me that I suck at what I'm doing or whatever. You know, so it wasn't really productive. So while it doesn't make me feel any better about what happened, it gives me better insight into what my teammates are thinking about me and how I'm playing and things and things like that. Um, but I think I still should make it clear because I don't know if I have yet or not, especially in this podcast. But when I'm yelling on the bench or saying things in the podcast, I'm not trying to be mean. Um, what I am trying to do is point out things so that we can be a better team. Point out things so that we can improve, so that we can be a better team. So moving forward, we're not consistently losing these games. Um, but now that the regular season is over, uh, I want to ask the question if we as a team have improved since our first game this season. And the short answer is that it doesn't look like it. It looks like we're right back where we started at the beginning of the season. Um, I think at one point we were improving and we were playing a lot better, but that peaked. I think what happened um, is the thought of consistently losing and going into games thinking we're not going to win impacts individual players' mindsets towards doing things that would improve the team overall. So I'm not saying that um, we could have improved enough to win a game this season, but I'm saying that we could have continued to improve so that next season or the season after we're playing more as a mid-group team and less of a bottom-group team, making those improvements there. But again, it's just that mindset of going into games, going into games thinking that we're not going to win or consistently losing to where players don't and it's not that they're not thinking about that oh, trying to improve the team or whatever but players aren't doing the things anymore to try to improve the team so if we're trying to improve as a team you're going to pass the ball however if we're if you're not concerned if the team improves like you believe that the team's already going to lose then you're going to want to shoot the ball instead of passing the ball it's it's just little things like that, and it's not even that you're consciously thinking about stuff like that. It's just that things like that happen, and like not wanting to pass the ball to certain players and stuff like that, that escalates as the team continues to lose. So as the team continues to lose, there's less incentive for players to play, I think, more as a team and more incentive for players to play as individuals. Um, th but that's just my thought. And we might not even have a next season. If we don't have a next season, that'll be disappointing. But I find it disappointing that um, some of the players are doing things like that. And it feels like it's disappointing to me, uh, even at a subconscious level, that some of the players don't want to improve the team overall. Anyway, thank you for listening to my podcast. Like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. Um, like and follow me if you're on SoundCloud. And I will be back next week with more. Hopefully I'll have an interview. I know I've been doing these like 30 minute podcasts instead of like doing it an hour, hour long or 40 minutes or more type podcasts. Um, I was really banking on trying to get that San Jose Ultras interview this weekend and that just didn't work out. So I don't know if I'm going to actually go into trying to get any other away groups for interviews or anything like that. But I think at this point, um, I'm just going to focus on trying to get some of the some more interviews from like the brigade and lot, like uh, other supporter groups that are for Reno and fans like that before the season starts. So I will be back next week with more.